This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading to M20 Standard to play one of my favorite archetypes. Favorite archetypes. And that is Boggles. We are mono green Boggles looking to take advantage of some sweet new Corsair 2020 editions along with some old cards to make some hexproof or pseudo hexproof creatures really big smash over stomp our opponent before they get a chance to recover. So as you can see, 75 bucks of paper, 29 ticks on Magic Online. As far as Magic Arena, I think we're at 8 rares in six mythics in the main deck so uh, not super cheap because of the six mythics but also not ridiculously expensive especially if you're playing best of one if you're playing all the sideboard cards it does increase the count a bit but still a pretty decent price for a pretty unique deck a quick reminder before we break down boggles for standard if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy budget magic in general, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk some Boggles, starting with the Boggle package. We'll get to the creatures in a minute, but the reason I wanted to try to build this deck was Season of Growth. So Season of Growth is kind of like the perfect Boggles the Enchantment. Only two mana. When a creature comes into play, you get to scry one, so get rid of those extra lands, find your action, and then when you cast a spell that targets a creature you control, you get to draw a card, so it keeps you churning through your deck. So this rewards us for targeting our own creatures with spells. As far as what we're targeting our creatures with, we have two two main payoffs for our boggles. First is Blanchwood Armor to go with our 22 forest mana base. So Blanchwood Armor, three mana gives a creature plus one plus one for each forest we control. So it's going to be at least plus three plus three when it comes down. And then it's going to be plus four plus four plus five plus five plus eight plus eight or ten plus ten as the game goes along. And then at the top end of our enchantment curve, we have our finisher in prodigious growth, which gives a creature plus seven plus seven and trample. So in theory, if we can get down a hexproof creature, Stick a Blanchwood Armor on it, stick a Prodigious Growth on it. We're going to have like a 15 power, 20 power attacker that is also really hard for most decks to interact with if it's hexproof and just smash our opponent in one or two really big attacks. So that's kind of the core of the deck. We also have some removal that targets our creatures. Since we're growing these big hexproof creatures, Thrash is like the ideal removal spell for this deck. Essentially just allows one of our creatures to deal damage to a creature or a planeswalker, which is really key. It's not really fighting because our creature doesn't take damage, so we're free to kill a lot of stuff. If we can build a big hexproof creature, very little risk in using this, and hitting planeswalker is really nice as well. Uh, in theory, we could cast Threat off of Paradise Druid, which is one of our pseudo hexproof creatures, but really, this is in the deck for the Thrash side, which also triggers our Season of Growth to draw more cards, which is really powerful. And then we have one of our biggest and best Corset 2020 editions, which is Vivian Arcbow Ranger. So Vivian kind of does a couple of things for this deck. First, it gives us additional thrash threats. The negative three, basically exactly thrash threat, hitting a creature or a planeswalker. So more removal, giving us a lot of removal spells in the deck. The negative two, really solid with our boggles. The counters are nice, but the big deal is trample. Uh, our Blanchwood armor doesn't give trample. Most of our creatures don't naturally have trample. So Vivian and giving a massive creature with a Blanchwood armor. Trample is a good way to force through damage, and then we take advantage of the negative five as well to tutor up some sweet silver bullets from our sideboard. Creature-wise, we start things off with Lanowar Elf just to kind of hold things together. Not something we really want to load up with enchantments, but it gets us up to a prodigious growth, ramps us into our Vivians and our bigger creatures. Then we have two pseudo hexproof two drops. First is Bark Eye Troll, which is actually a really impressive card. A 3-3 three, three for 2 is already a pretty good deal. That's above the curve for a 2-drop. And then it comes into play with a counter. We can pay one, remove the counter to give it hexproof. So it's hexproof once, essentially, which makes it fairly safe to load up with our enchantments. The other trick is, since Vivian can put counters on things, if we can keep putting counters on Bark Hydroll, then we can make it hexproof multiple times, which makes it even more safe to go all in with our Blanchwood armors and our other enchantments. Paradise Druid! 
little bit weird, another one of our ramp creatures, but it is hexproof as long as it's untapped, so we can kind of like load it up with enchantments, and then depending on the matchup, wait till our opponent's tapped out, have it on defense, or if it's a matchup where our opponent shouldn't have hard removal, if we get a Blanchwood Armor Prodigious Growth on it, it's still a very fine attacker. So those are kind of our early game pseudo hexproof creatures. Then we have our big hexproof creatures, Vine Mare, Carnage Tyrant. These are the creatures where it's basically 100% safe to get them down and just throw all of our enchantments on it, target them with all of our removal spells, and try to make them as big as possible. So Vine Mare, 4 drop, Hexproof, 5-3, once it gets a Blanchwood Armor, or especially Prodigious Growth, it becomes an unbeatable attacker really quickly, and then Carnage Tyrant, cheap enough to go on budget decks now. Because rotation's coming up, the price has come down a lot, it is expensive at 6 mana, but no one's beating a Carnage Tyrant with a Blanchwood Armor or 2 on it. It just becomes so big, it's trampling, it's Hex proof it can't be countered so a great threat at the top end of our curve so that's basically the plan of the deck get down hopefully season of growth get down some hexproof creatures load them up with enchantments go to town and kill our opponent then we have vivian again so vivian we talked about how it's good removal it's good at pumping our creatures giving them trample the other thing vivian does is allows us to wish creatures from our sideboard which is really important to our sideboard plan so first these are cards that we can bring in in the right matchups but also snag in game one or when they're in our sideboard from our Vivian. So Healer of the Glade, life gain against decks like Mono Red, other aggro decks. Death Gorge Scavenger, again, life gain, but also hate for graveyards if we run into like Arclight Phoenix decks. Then we have a bunch of removal creatures. Cruel Harpooner for Flyers, Brontodon to deal with artifacts, enchantments. Gargos, kind of hilarious, but if we get up to enough mana, we can tutor it out, cast it, and then it becomes really crazy. It's going to fight a bunch of things, kill a bunch of things, and actually becomes a really big threat once it's on the battlefield. Shifting Ceratops to fight against Mono Blue, also against Control decks, really essential in those matchups. And then our non-creatures, we have Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down Planeswalkers, Veil of Summer basically to protect us and our creatures from removal, uh, plus a Cantrips, which makes it a little bit nicer, fights through counter spells, which can be annoying. And that is Boggles for Standard, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's get to the gameplay, throw some enchantments on some hexproof creatures, cross our fingers, hope it works out, see what happens. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and I will talk to you soon. All right, budget magic time. We are losing some die rolls on the draw here, playing some some mono green boggles, and we have the worst luck ever. All right, oh, that's a mulligan. All right, this is a uh, bad, but just normal bad. So I guess we will keep it. Yeah. Uh, forest to the bottom. All right, opponent, go ahead. Well, opponent, looks like they don't have the best hand either. Doing some mulligan. My guess is, well, when I see someone mulligan a lot, my initial guess is they're playing Feather. Because Feather is like the mulligan deck of standard. Looking to abuse the London mulligan rule a bit. All right, opponent's going to four. Are you playing Feather? Well, land and land of where elves. Godless Shrine, eh? Opponent, untaps. Eh, it looks like not Feather. All right, it's vampires. I'll play a land, play Season of Growth. No attacks. Uh, opponent. Untap land. Sky Marcher Aspirant. And Sky Marcher Aspirant. All right, opponents run them all out. Gets in. No blocks. Well, Forest. Vine Mare. Scry Forest to the bottom. And pass the turn. One you got, opponent. So we do get to kill the Legion Lieutenant next turn. Attacks. Attacks. Yup. No blocks. Down to 12. Opponent passes. Well, play the forest. Play Vivian. I am Scala's Vengeance, and I'm coming for you. Hmm. How do we want to do this? So we can fight Legion Lieutenant. Yeah, let's just do that. Vine Mare, fight Legion Lieutenant. We're gonna tear you and out. pass the turn. And then next turn, uh, hmm, let's not attack. Defending Vivian actually seems decent. Bonnet, untaps. Eh, our hands kind of worked out a little bit. I'm sure it's not hurting that our opponent's on the big mulligan. Bonnet, passes. Well, play a forest. Take up on Vine Mare. Prodigious Growth, the Vine Mare. Draw a card. And we might have boggled him. <laughs> Draw into Paradise Druid. 
And yeah, I mean, attack for 14. Ooh, all right. Mortifies prodigious grow. So opponent's not dead yet. They're staying alive. They had the mortify and they get to kill our Vivian. Plays a land and there's a Soren. Okay. Well, Soren's a good one. Pumps the Sky Marcher. Hits us. Kills Vivian. All right. Down to nine. Ooh, prodigious growth. Seven, four, oh, all right. I guess that works. How about number two? Prodigious growth, draw a card. Uh, tag you. And, yeah, well, opponent started at a bit of a disadvantage with, uh, with the mulligan, but... We got there, we got there. I mean, we started with a not great hand, but opponent's hand, admittedly, was more not great than ours. Huh, Sorens. Soren, Soren, Sorens. We got a bunch of ways to fight Soren. Man, Soren's so good in their deck. I'm tempted to like, tempted to bring in Spyglasses just to name Soren. Like maybe go down one Prodigious Growth and one, hmm. <sighs> Do we go down two? Yeah, let's go down two prodigious gross. Run it like that. More ways to deal with Soren is important. That's my impression of the vampire deck is when it has Soren going, it's insane. But when it doesn't have Soren, a little bit more hit or miss. Uh, okay. I mean, this hand's fine. We have a answer to Soren. Legion's landing for our opponent. Now land go. Swamp. And there is a Legion Lieutenant. Opponent getting in for two. Hmm. All right, land paradise through it. We're gonna take our beads for now. See what our opponent has. Untap land. Soren time. Ooh, another legion lieutenant. All right. Ooh, that's a that is a strong hand. Opponent gets in. No blocks. Well, this is a good vampire hand without Soren. Down to twelve. Season of growth. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just have to Blanchwood armor. No attacks. We're taking a lot though. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're just straight up dead to a Soren or a Lord. Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Opponent gets in. Yeah, I think we're just dead anyway. Play Season of Growth. Kill this. Uh, kill. Block. Die. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a that was a pretty uh, pretty strong vampire hand. The double lord draw seems reasonable. Well, that was a lot more flyers than we thought. Let's bring in a couple harpooners, and maybe we got to trim a season of growth. And maybe we uh, maybe it's wrong to be fighting Soren this way. Maybe we just got to kill Soren. All right, run it like that. At least we're uh, on the play for game number three. All right, what do you got, opponent? Let's get a nice hand. All right. Well, this is a creaturey hand. Untap land, opponent. Knight of Even Legion. Well, land, Bark Eye Troll. Planes for our opponent. Legion Lieutenant. Well, land, Bark Eye Troll. Go attacking. Opponent down to 15. Pass the turn. Land for our opponent. Dusk Legion Zealot draws a card. Sure. And passing? Opponent's down to 14. Opponent passes. I'll play the land. Huh. Let's go to combat. Get him with a bark hide. Opponent takes it. Vine Mare. Currently unblockable. Pass the turn. And that's a good target for this Blanchwood armor. Opponent down to nine. Oh my God. Do we just win? I think we just have lethal. Oh, opponent, big vampires can't block Vimeer. And that looks like the Boggle win. We'll take it. Do your worst, opponent. Oh, the secret hidden text can't be blocked by black creatures. Blanchwood armor. Yeah, forest, Blanchwood armor. And 10, you with all your black creatures. And that is Boggles taking down the new hotness. Whew, that
That was a triple lord draw. Triple lord. That wasn't... So game one we won because our opponent kind of had a clunky draw. But that game, opponent had triple lord and we just took it to him. We took it to him with our boggles. All right. That was impressive. That was legitimately impressive for boggles. Whew. Sweet, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing some mono green boggles in standard and... I mean, I guess this hand's fine. We got some acceleration at least. Bonet, what are you up to? Swamp. Vampires. Well, play a land. Play Paradise Druid. No attacks. Bonet, combat, attacks, no blocks. Down to 19. Ooh, not vampires. Green, black, something. Huh. Well, play Season of Growth. Thrash Thrash. Kill Growth Chamber Guardian. Draw a card. Not a land, though. Pass the turn. Ugh. We kind of wanted a land there. Opponent. Woodland Cemetery. Gonna grow the night. Gets it. Yeah, down to 15. Hmm. Well, play Vine Mare. Keep the land on top. Pass the turn. Opponent, combat. Gets it. No blocks. Down to 13. Thankfully, I have this thrash threat incoming. Opponent land untapped. Growth chamber guardian. I'll play the land. Hmm. Let's thrash threat. Kill the knight. Draw a card. Play land or else. Scry. Uh, I guess we keep Carnage Tyrant. Get in with Vine Mare. Hit our opponent. And yeah. What do you got, opponent? They can grow the Growth Chamber Guardian, but our things are going to be really big. Llanowar Elves. Combat. No attacks. Well, play the land, and we're just going for it. Prodigious Growth on Vine Mare. Draw a card. Ooh, Blanchwood Arbor, two. Uh, attack for 12? Opponent takes it to one. All right, what is your plan to get out of this, opponent? Yeah, Growth Chamber Guardian, that's fine. But they need, they need an answer. They need an answer. We're just going bigger, bigger than Green Black, bigger than the Growth Chambers, and scoops it up. Okay. Well, that was a good Boggles draw. That's what the deck can do. Just blank the removal, beat him down. It's a fairly effective strategy. Um, all right, so I guess we just Veil of Summer? What do we even cut? Do we even cut anything? Maybe we're just fine in this matchup. And let's run it back. I don't know what our opponent's doing. Veil of Summer's probably fine, but I'm not sure if it's necessary. And that went pretty well. Our opponent had a solid start too, and we just, we boggled him. We boggled him. We'll make a decision for game three if we lose this one. So opponent's on the play. Um. Yeah, not enough lands. Ugh. All right, this one will keep under protest. We need this land war to live. Opponent, land and land war. Well, land and land war. Land war is all around. We did draw land, which is nice. Opponent, scry land to the top. And passes. Well, forest. Um, ha. Huh. Yeah, let's bark eye troll. No attacks. Continuing to draw lands would be fine. Thorn Lieutenant for our opponent. And a land. Opponent passes. Hmm. Well, play Season of Growth. Pass the turn. Come on, lands! Opponent plays a land and Nissa. Yeah, Nissa's not great for us. Animates a land. Gets it. Uh, no blocks. Oh, come on, land. Come on, land. Llanowar. Uh, all right, Blanchwood Armor. Well, there's the land. Play the land. Combat. Attack Nissa. All right, there's a chump block. Um, yeah, pass the turn. I think we need to leave up Hexproof here. So opponent's got a ton of mana. Thorn Lieutenant. Animates a land. The land fights for us. 
plays a land. Combat. Gets in, gets in, gets in. All right. We take it. <laughs> Down to 11. Opponent passes. Ooh, so close. Hmm. This Nissa. What do we do about this Nissa? Well, I guess we play Land or Elves. Scry. Keep the forest. Play Bark Eye Troll. Scry. Keep the forest. Nissa would probably be pretty good in our deck, actually. It doesn't really work with the Boggles plan, but it's just such a powerful card. Opponent untaps. Tons of mana still. Land. Animates a land. Combat. Attacks, attacks. Attacks, attacks. Well, we will. Block a land, block a land. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, block a land, block a land. Opponent can pump the Thorn Lieutenants. Or a Thorn Lieutenant. Yup. So we drop to three. Opponent passes. We play the forest. Hmm. Uh, what is our pathway out of here? Alright, play Vivian. Nature will take back what rightfully belongs. Counters on Bark Eye Troll. I get out of the way. Combat. Kill Nissa. Uh okay. Uh yep. Alright. Sassin's Trophy, not going for the creature, but the Blanchwood armor, and that does it. Ooh, yeah, got Nissud. A little bit. A little bit Nissud. Well, we are on the play for game three, which is where we want to be. With a fast start, I think we just stomp over our opponent. But our opponent got to go off with Nissa that game, because our start was just not fast enough, and Nissa was just outside of Thrash threat range. Well, all right, we'll keep this. This is a go all in on vine mare sort of hand land or elves go forest for our opponent also land or elves well forest go and we'll see opponent land riding regisar well land vine mare opponent gotta start discarding girl chamber guardian combat gets it no blocks down to 13 Opponent, Scryland to the bottom. And Knight of the Ebon Legion and Girl Chamber Guardian. And grows the Knight. Well, play the forest. Blanchwood Armor. Llanowar Elves. Go attacking. Opponent takes it. Okay. Our pathway to victory is to draw land. Opponent, combat. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, we got a block. All right, give us a land for prodigious growth. That's where we're at. Down to nine. Knight of Eben landing. Land, 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 land. It's a land. All right, well, do you have Assassin's Trophy? Prodigious growth. One card in hand. Attack. Oh! Oh, God. Wow. And now they get to chump with Llanowar and win. All right. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. All right. Well, that was an explosive game. Pony had the right answer, though. Oh, what a game. What a game. Oh, all right. All right, all right. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing some mono green boggles in standard, and I mean, I guess this hand's fine. We can get off to a fast start potentially. Four is for our opponent. Llanowar Elves. I'll play the land, play Barkide. And uh, no attacks. Paradise Druid for our opponent. Passes. Ooh. Now play Vivian. Oh, I am gonna love tearing this place. Um Yeah, counters on the dorks. 
<laughs> Go attacking. Some time. Pony has a lot of mana, though. Breeding pool and baffling end. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, less than ideal, I would say. And also a Teferi. Oh, opponent. Opponent, opponent, opponent. They got it all. Well, play a forest, play land or elves. Play land or elves. Hmm. Kill Paradise Druid. Get him. Pass the turn. Opponent taking up to fairy. Untap land. Nissa. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty good draw. I gotta say, I think that we might be in one of the all-time worst standards for budget decks. Blanchwood armor. Take up. My my, how you've grown. Attack Nissa. Opponent blocks. Nissa stays at one. So our opponent still has a ton of mana. Untap land. Tapping. Untapping. And uh, the world's biggest crosses. I've got time. World's biggest crosses. Opponent up to 14, gets a 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We're stealing it. We're stealing it. Blanchwood. Oh, we're not stealing it. We're a point of damage short. Oh my goodness. One forest short again. So kill crosses. You picked the wrong fight. <sighs> kill to fairy. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Pawn it full head. Plays a lad. Oh. Boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This deck should be called One Forest Short of Being Good. Risen Reef. Pawn it got to get that free value. Bone it. Undeps. Passes. Well, play a forest. Play Vivian. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive. You. Take up Vivian. Stomping time. Attack our opponent. Blocks. Block. Opponent goes to one. Infinite mana. Untaps. Land. Twelve mana. And scoops it up? Huh! We got there! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! One for a short, but we still got there. Whew! Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, we will... Oh, my goodness. Well, bring in Ceratops, I think. Ceratops seems good against what our opponent's doing. Oh, I thought we were done for sure. Ceratops has protection from a lot of our opponent's removal. Maybe trim a couple Vine Mares... I guess we also probably want Sorceress Spyglass. What about Fail of Summer? It stops to Fairy Bounce, but that's about it. We gotta hope we get our stuff on a Hexproof creature or Protection creature. Maybe go one Carnage Tyrant, one Vine Mare, and... Hmm. Let's go down one Paradise Druid. Run it like that. Okay! Well, we snuck it out! We snuck it out somehow! The world's biggest bad is Llanowar Elf. Kinda came through... Oh, I thought we had the kill way earlier, but bone it. Um, all right, I guess we'll keep this. Thrash Threat's actually pretty good, since it can also kill Planeswalkers. And Bark Hydral giving itself Hexproof is relevant. Bone it, tap land, and Llanowar Elves. Um, yeah, let's just kill Llanowar. 
go attacking. Season of growth would be helpful. Opponent. Land. And baffling gun. Alright. Well, forest bark eye troll. Come on, season of growth. Pass the turn. Land for our opponent. Little crosses. Yup. And passes. More, ugh, more forest. Well, Blanchwood armor. Get in for seven. Ooh, opponent jump blocks. All right. Pass the turn. What do you got, opponent? What do you got? Running out crosses for two. Oh, uh, for one card is kind of a sign of weakness. Baffling end. Well, give a hexproof. Lanor Elves. Opponent passing. Ugh. Well, the flood is on. Get in. Opponent down to 13. Pass the turn. Ooh, well, come on, Bark Eye Troll. You are all we got. Plays a lot tapped. Nissa, who shakes the world. Well, alright. Fight Nissa. Come on. And opponent scoops it up! And opponent scoops it up! Bark Eye Troll coming through! Oh, taking down the pile of mythics! Oh no, Boggles! Boggles, Boggles! Okay! Alright! Oh, alrighty then! Wow! What a mixture of emotions, but we got there! The Boggles got there! <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet, sweet! Uh, somehow. I gotta say, I know earlier in this match I was like, eh, it's a bad, one of the worst standards for budget decks. On the other hand, when your budget deck does take down the, like, Teferi, Nissa, Crosses, 20 rare land deck, it does feel good. Cause when your, like, $70 deck beats a $500 deck. So, that part is nice. That's the upside of uh, it being a tough standard for budget. But, whoo. All right. All right, all right. Boggles. Boggles, boggles. Sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing some mono green boggles. And, uh, alright. This hand, we don't have any hexproof creatures, but we do have a season of growth. And we have some land wars for ramp, so this seems reasonable. Playing for our opponent, Rune Law Enforcer. Well, play a land, play season of growth. Land or else. Do some scry. Ooh, fine, Mare. Huh. One, two, three, four. All right, we'll keep Vine Mare. Pass the turn. I mean, Vine Mare into prodigious growth is, that's a clock, opponent. Gets it, no blocks. Well, play a land, play Vine Mare. All right, keep Blanchwood armor. No attack. So next turn we can Blanchwood Paradise Druid, and then the following turn, Theoretically, prodigious growth. All right, opponent making some tokens. Locks it on. Well, that's a clock. So we get to Blanchwood armor. Draw a card. Thrash threat. Kill. Kill. I guess Tomic. Draw a card. Land. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, get in. Opponent's down to 11, and then if our opponent swings out, in theory, this prodigious growth just ends it. Amara. Ooh, Conclave Tribunal. All right, all right, all right. That's pretty, oh. Oh, opponent. All right, I think that's game. Uh, land. Prodigious growth. And that's a 1715, and uh, that's a game! That's Boggles! <laughs> Jump it up, soldier! Woo! Okay! And uh, that's what our deck can do. That's what it can do. <laughs> Opponent's going wide, but we're just going tall. And in that case, looks like going tall is the winner. Uh, tokens, though. Actually. 
We might have got lucky to win that one. This actually feels like a somewhat challenging matchup. Where since we're mono green, it's not like we have a sweeper to just deal with a bunch of tokens. We can just put big bodies on the battlefield, which is good. I guess like thrashing Brontodons in. Man, do we want a Gorgos? Ha. Ha 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 ha. Thrashing Brontodon in. We'll go down one Carnage Tyrant. And we do want a removal. Ha. Huh. I guess Gargos we can potentially get with Vivian. It does seem kind of hilarious way to keep the board in check. It also does die. Uh, let's go down one Vivian. Against the go wide deck. Do we want... Uh, maybe we bring in a Harpooner too. Let's go down one Barkhide up one Harpooner. Try it like that. We did see Tomic and they could have like Lyra's after sideboarding. A little bit more removal can't hurt. Well, game one went well. I mean, that's what this deck can do. It can just make a really big, really hexproof thing pretty quick. Um, all right. Missing our early game acceleration, but opponent land and legions landing. Ooh, all right. There's our early game acceleration. No blocks. <laughs> nice try, opponent. Uh, opponent's gonna flower up land. Sure. Plays the forest, passes. Now play the forest. Yeah, let's harpooner. And get in for one. Land for our opponent and history of Benalia. Sure. Well, forest, vine mare. No attacks. Opponent, more tokens. Plays the land. Amara. And there's a Loxodot. So our opponent does have a really good start here. I'll play a land, play Paradise Druid. Hmm. I guess we... Kill Amara. And just pass the turn. Try to survive this huge attack. Opponent pumps the knights. Plays the land. Shalai. Opponent attacks, flips. Well, kill venerated Loxodon. Drop to nine. Ha. Huh. Well, play Carnage Tyrant. No attacks. Uh, opponent might have went wide enough, though. Wow. Okay. Immortal Sun. Opponent passes. Well, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, that beats us. Huh. Immortal Sun. Interesting. We needed Vivian to be able to fight Shalai to have any chance. Immortal Sun, A. Eh? Well, bring in another Harpooner. Go down one more Bark Eyed. Run it like that. I mean, we have answers to Immortal Sun in our Thrashing Brontodons. Being on the play for game number three should be helpful. We can potentially get off to a pretty fast start. Opponents had very good hands both games. Game one, we were able to take him down, though. All right, this is... This is okay. We're light in... Huh. Yeah. All right, opponent untap land. Legion's landing. I'll play a land, play Paradise through it. Pass the turn. Opponent gets in. No blocks. Wouldn't mind just drawing... There's Tomic. A land? There's a land. Okay. So play a land. Play Season of Growth. Play Harpooner. Kill Tomic. And Scry. Prodigious growth, gotta go bottom for now. Uh, opponent. Amara. And a land. And a flower. Okay, well, we're keeping our opponent's board in check. Another land would be sweet. I guess we get a redraw for it with this thrash threat. Opponent gets in, hits us. Ooh, there's a land. Alright, so play the land. Play thrashing Brontodon. Scry forest to the bottom. And then... Thrash Threat, kill Amara, draw a card. 
Ooh, and that's Vivian. All right. Opponent untaps. Land. Passes. Well, play Vivian. Close your eyes. Breathe. Listen to the sounds of the wild. Start growing the dorks. We're fit enough to survive. Go to combat. Get in with Brontodon. Pwn it. Takes it. Okay, play the land. Pass the turn. Are we seeing a mini march? March for two? Alright, there's the mini march. Pwn it undaps. Land. Trostani Discordant. Alright, that's more annoying. That's actually really annoying. Big attack flips. Well, eat a token. Yeah, that's not great. Vivian down to one. I like a fight. Opponent passes. Well, play Vine Mare. Uh, do more Vine Mares? I think we gotta go Vine Mare bottom. I'm not sure just more Vine Mares does it here. Take up. Counters on the dorks. My, my. How you No attacks. Pass the turn. Land for our opponent. Everything at Vivian. Well, block, block. So we lose our Vivian. We kill some stuff. I need to hone my skills. Opponent pass. Oh, do they have another march? Well, play Paradise Druid. Forest to the bottom. Get in with Vine Mare. Opponent gonna make a dork. Block. Well, pass the turn. At least it wasn't a March of the Multitudes. Land for our opponent. Although we're on the March of the Multitudes clock. Like, sooner or later they're gonna draw that. We untap. Ooh, Blanchwood Armor. Well, Blanchwood Armor. Draw a card. Combat attack. Opponent makes a dork. Blocks. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Venerated Loxodon. Yup. Opponent. Passing. Well, play the land. Prodigious Grove. This is gonna be a big vine mare. Ugh, into a land. Well, get in with Vine Mare. That's a 1917. Oh! Oh! Wow. Huh. I didn't know people still played. Oh, Arena, you're the laggiest. Okay. Well, that's, that's very bad. Opponent untaps. draws a mortal son. Oh, things are getting worse by the second. Opponent goes on the big attack. Well, we are going to kill Tristati. Wow, settle the wreckage. Drop to four. Thrash Threat. Kill Loxodon. Draw more lands. Go to combat. Hit our opponent. Play Harpooner. Definitely putting Forest to the bottom. Play the land. Kill Immortal Sun. Yeah, I think we're done. Pass the turn. Settle the wreckage. Huh. Well, that's a good tricky sideboard card. Another Trostani, and we will scoop it up. Whoo! The blowouts. The blowouts. Whoo! Close, close, close. That's a tough matchup.
Uh, mono green, we just don't have a way to sweep away the tokens, and that was a an issue, that game. All right, budget magic time. We are getting screwed with some mono green boggles. Uh, all right, this hand is risky, but we're gonna keep it. We have to keep it. Vine mirror to the bottom. I mean, uh, yeah. Zero land into one land. If this land of war elf dies, we probably just uh, scoop it up. Oh, it's mono. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, no, oh, that was a a fun a fun game. Do we draw land? All right, we draw land, so we do get to keep attempting to play magic. Paradise druid. You land for our opponent. Vashino pyromancer. Well, that's another land. Okay. Well, we're still in this. Um, no attacks. We're still in it. We're still in it. We hit lads. I mean, that's the nightmare start, but full price light up the stage. Pyromancer, Firebrand. Opponent passes. No attacks. Pass the turn. Oh, Season of Growth would be sweet with these thrash threats. Land for our opponent. Pyromancer part two. Uh-huh. And fanatical firebrand. Opponent. Well, let's kill a pyromancer. Untap. Hmm. Well, play the land, play Vivian. Oh, I am gonna love tearing this place to the ground. Yeah, let's uh let's just keep growing this paradise druid. Sorry, I don't know. We're fit enough to survive. And no attacks this turn. Uh I don't think the red deck's gonna kill an 8-7. They're going to have to try to kill us. Opponent passes. Well. Grow Paradise Druid. And, I mean, now I guess we go attacking. Stomping time. It is stomping time, Vivian. You are very correct. Also has Trample, so this jump block not going to be effective. Well, this was a mulligan, one lander, land of where elves die on turn one, and we still have a, a Ted Power Paradise Druid. Opponent, yep, block sacks, takes a million. Play land, pa oh, we should have played that first. That's right, it's a Blanchwood armor. Opponent. Well, you need something good opponent if you want to continue living. Opponent, passing. Well, uh, same plan. Take it up. <laughs> and, okay, I guess this is gonna work. Here it comes, that's a 13-12. Game? Okay. <laughs> we boggled them. Whoa, okay. I didn't think there was any chance that hand was gonna work to start things off, like just zero chance, but uh, it did work, it did work. Let's bring in the healer of the glade. Go down the Carnage Tyrants. Go up Death Gorge Scavenger. Ooh, maybe go down like a Prodigious Growth for Harpooner. Prodigious Growth for Brontanon. Basically, we're trying to lower our curve. We have big creatures, we have ways to trample them. The challenge in this matchup is making sure our curve is low enough that we don't just get run over. We have a little bit of life gain, not a ton, but we do have a little. Well, game one went surprisingly well for how it started. Okay, that's a mulligan. All right, that's a keep. Um, I guess vine mirror to the bottom? Opponent, land, and lava runner. Well, land go. Lava runner, part two. Opponent gets it, hits us. Ooh, paradise druid's pretty good. Land paradise druid. Lava runner, part three. Well, no blocks this time, down to 18. Ooh, season of growth. Well, for this turn, we're gonna bark eye troll. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can season of growth and fight something to start drawing cards. Bonnet, land number two. Lava coils. Well, we will hexproof it. 
Bonnet passes. Oh, Blanchwood armor. Okay. Well, season of growth. Hmm. Yeah, let's thrash. Kill Lava Runner. Draw a card. No attacks. All right, opponent, another land. And there's a Whirler. Sure. Gets in. No blocks this time. Hmm. Well, play a land. Let's Blanchwood Armor draw a card. Into Bark Eye Troll. Forest to the bottom. No attacks. All right, opponent, let's see what removal you got. And we have Vivian for fighting next turn, Tybalt. All right, gonna start making some dorks. Opponent passes. Well, we draw land, we play a land. We play Vivian. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. Yeah, let's just tick up. We're fit enough to survive. Um, no attacks. Pass the turn. Also, Vivian resets the counters on Bark Eye Troll. Steamkin for our opponent. Makes a devil. I adore an audience. Opponent. Pass it. More lands. Hmm. We could tutor for something. Is there anything insane we can tutor for? Not really. Well, tick up, tick up. <laughs> Stomping Go to time. combat. Kill Tibal. New tortures are needed. Death Gorge Scavenger. Eat a lava runner, gates of life. Alright. Opponent kills it. Sure. We still gain the life. Up to 16, and we scry. We don't want a land of war. Definitely not. And, yeah, pass the turn. Steamkin part two. And these two steam skins are a little scary. Opponent. Shocks our face, grows the steamkins. Yup. And. Passing? Okay. Opponent passes. We draw nothing. Well, I guess it's tutor time. And I guess we're taking Gargos. I'm not sure you can handle what I have planned. Scry. We don't want Vine Mare. Play a forest. Man, no attacks. Pass the turn. We need something to target our creatures. Oh, opponent's got these steam. If they have Frenzy, then go off. Potentially. Opponent. Tax us. Tax Vivian. Tax Vivian. Well, kill the devil. We are going to lose our Vivian. Boy, we want any enchantment. Any enchantment. Kills Vivian. Opponent passes. Oh, Paradise Druid scries. Forest definitely to the bottom. Do some attacking. Wow, opponent takes it to one. Okay! Can we live one more turn? Land. Opponent. All out attack. Well, we will kill you. We will kill you. We will kill you. Drop to nine. Kills Gargos, which means we get to kill Steamkin. And that should be game. Sure. Opponent passes. Untap. And Pono scoops it up. Whoo! Take it down, Mono Red. That was pretty impressive. Gargos from the sideboard with our Vivian, and that's what Boggles could do. Hmm. I thought Mono Red might be hard because we don't have that much life gain. 
But uh, we can just grow really huge creatures that Mono Red cannot deal with. And uh, I think maybe our opponent was supposed to be more aggressive. I don't know. They would have lost a lot of creatures, but sweet. That was a good Boggles performance. Sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Boggles in Standard? And overall, I mean, the deck... It functioned pretty well. I honestly, our video matches, we went three and two. I honestly have no idea what our overall record was. I played a lot of games with this deck. I probably played like 15 matches, maybe more, of like playing and tuning and changing and tuning before finally getting to this build. So I feel like the deck, it could do some really powerful things. Uh, the upside is it can close out the game really quickly, and it's really hard for some decks to interact with. Like the hexproof creatures, even the pseudo hexproof creatures are really good. Good. We have a surprising amount of removal spells for uh, Planeswalker decks, and we took down Mono Red, so we can keep up with aggro just by building really big creatures that our opponent get can't really get through efficiently. So the deck did a lot of good things. On the other hand, we saw in some of our matchups some really big blowouts, like Assassin's Trophy keeping us from winning a match is that we thought we were going to win. We also had some games that uh, we we're like a land short from making a lethal creature with Blanchwood armor. So it's really close to being powerful, even in the games where it didn't quite work out. One thing I'm not sure about is Season of Growth. Season of Growth was the reason I built this deck, and that's the card I really wanted to see how good it was. And I feel like it was only okay. I feel like in some games it was really good. The scrying is nice. The card draw is nice. But but I'm wondering if maybe it would be better just to be like a stompy deck. Like, you could take this deck, cut some of the enchantment-y type stuff, cut the season of growth, and play just kind of like green stompy with Vivian, and maybe that would be a more effective plan. Uh, I'm not really sure. So season of growth, the value really varies, although at the same time, we didn't draw it very often, which is always sad when you're trying to test out a certain card and you don't draw it that often. It's hard to know how good it actually is. So I feel like Boggles, it definitely has the ability to steal games from just about anyone. When we just go like Llanowar Elves into a Hexproof Threat, into Blanchwood Armor, and then Vivian and Prodigious Growth, that's going to beat most decks in the format. There are a few random blowouts, like sometimes Grixis has like Angras Rampage, which is annoying if they have Edict Effects. Uh, there are some some sweepers running around in some matchups, so it's not like the plan is 100% unbeatable, but in a lot of matchups, decks really struggle to interact with what we're doing. Vivian was incredibly powerful, our threats are pretty solid, Vinemare and Bark High Troll was very impressive to go with our enchantments, so overall, I feel like Boggles, it feels like a reasonable budget option. I don't think it's like the best deck of the format, but it's a deck that you can win some games with. It plays in a really unique way. If you like just annoying your opponents with making it so they can't interact with what you're doing and trying to stomp them down, beat them down before they get a chance to recover, uh, it seems like a decent way of going about it. Another thing to mention for non-budget decks would be pretty easy to splash a color. Uh, you could splash like blue and play counter spells in your sideboard. You could splash into, I don't know, white and play like God's Willing, some other removal spells. Uh, so there's options to splash into additional colors that could be pretty powerful. Uh, I tried, like, blue-green boggles, which offers some potential. You get some sweet enchantments in blue that, like, give flying a curious obsession. Uh, I tried green-white boggles with, like, the Enchantress Lord thing, Seder oh, Enchanter, I think it is. Uh, I tried that build, so there's a bunch of different things you can do out of the shell. I think that... The mono green build is probably the best budget option. If you can go non-budget and play an optimal mana base with a bunch of dual lands and shock lands, then going multicolor, I think, has some potential as well. But in budget form, I think you start with mono green, you try to beat down, and then you can build out from the shell from there, uh, splashing new additional color to get some sideboard stuff, some additional options in the main deck. So anyway, that's been Boggles for Standard. That's been our budget magic for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.